In the turbulent history of England, few conflicts have rivaled the Wars of the Roses. A brutal struggle for power that tore the nation apart, pitting the houses of Lancaster and York against each other in a deadly tussle for the throne. Join me as we delve deep into the heart of the Wars of the Roses, exploring one of the most decisive battles during this time. From the rise of the Yorkists to the tragic fall of the Lancastrians, we'll uncover the dramatic events that unfolded on the battlefield of Barnet. As the houses of Lancaster and York lined up to face each other in combat, one question remained. Who will emerge victorious in this epic struggle for power? Before we look more in depth at the Battle of Barnet, we must look at the wider events that led to it. The Wars of the Roses was fought between 1455 and 1487. They were a series of civil wars in England that pitted the rival houses of Lancaster and York against each other. Primarily, these wars were over who had the rightful claim to the English throne. Each house claimed that they descended from Edward III, who reigned from 1327 to 1377, with the House of Lancaster descending from John of Gaunt, the third surviving son of Edward and the House of York descending from Edmund of Langley, the fourth surviving son and younger brother of John. The Wars of the Roses were not just about conflicting claims to the throne, they were also a product of political instability and personal rivalries among the nobility. The weakening of central authority under the ineffective rule of Henry VI allowed powerful nobles like the Duke of York and the Earl of Warwick to assert greater influence. Henry ascended to the throne as an infant, inheriting the crown from his father, Henry V, a renowned military leader, who beat the French at the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. However, unlike his father, Henry VI proved to be a weak and ineffective ruler, unable to control the powerful noble factions vying for influence at court. One of the most ambitious and influential figures of this time was Richard Plantagenet, the Duke of York. Richard had a strong claim to the throne through his descent from Edward III's second eldest son, Lionel of Antwerp. The Yorkists, as Richard and his supporters came to be known, argued that their claim was superior to that of the Lancastrians, because they were descended from a younger son of Edward. The conflict between these two houses simmered for years, with tensions escalating as the Yorkists grew increasingly frustrated with what they saw as mismanagement and corruption in Henry VI's government. The Battle of St. Albans in 1455 marked the first major clash of the Wars of the Roses. In this battle, the Yorkists, led by Richard of York, achieved a decisive victory over the Lancastrians, capturing King Henry VI himself. However, this was just the beginning of a series of battles and political maneuverings that would characterize the Wars of the Roses. The Battle of Barnet, which took place on April 14, 1471, was a pivotal moment in the conflict. By this time, Richard of York's son, Edward IV, had taken the throne after the Battle of Towton in 1461. Edward IV's reign initially brought a period of stability, but tensions soon resurfaced. In the tumultuous years leading up to the Battle of Barnet, the Lancastrians, led by Queen Margaret of Anjou and her son, Edward of Westminster, found themselves facing a series of setbacks in their struggle against the Yorkists. After Henry VI was captured and deposed in 1461, the Lancastrians sought assistance from Henry Tudor, a prominent figure among the exiled Lancastrians. Henry, who would later become King Henry VII, was seen as a beacon of hope for the Lancastrian cause. Additionally, the Lancastrians turned to the powerful King of France, Louis XI, for support in their bid to reclaim the English crown. Queen Margaret and the Lancastrian faction viewed Louis' support as a crucial step towards their goal of reclaiming the English throne. The stage was set for a pivotal moment in the Wars of the Roses, with the Lancastrians bolstered by French backing and the promise of Henry Tudor's support. This alliance and the surrender of Calais would ultimately set the stage for the Lancastrian forces campaign to challenge Edward IV's rule in England. The events that followed, including the Battle of Barnet, would shape the course of English history. Upon learning of this alliance against him, Edward IV made a strategic retreat to Burgundy in October 1470. This move temporarily shifted the scales of power in favour of the Lancastrians, 
leading to the restoration of Henry VI to the throne. However, Edward IV's resolve remained unbroken. Despite this setback, he skillfully secured both support and financial assistance from his brother-in-law, the Duke of Burgundy. In early 1471, Edward embarked on a decisive return to England, landing in Yorkshire. From this northern stronghold, he meticulously gathered loyal supporters to his cause. With each step southward, his forces swelled in numbers and determination, as word of his return spread like wildfire throughout England. At the time, Barnet was a small town in Hertfordshire, north of London, and the night before the battle, a thick fog had descended upon the area. This fog would play a crucial role in the events that followed. The Yorkist army had about 10 to 12,000 men, whereas the Lancastrians were 15,000 strong. Despite being outnumbered, Edward IV's army held a decisive advantage in the form of their strategic positions and clever tactics. The Yorkists, under the command of Lord Hastings, held a position to the north of Barnet, concealing their forces behind a ridge, exploiting the fog to their advantage. This shrouded their true numbers from the Lancastrian forces, giving the Yorkists a significant tactical advantage. Furthermore, the Yorkists strategically positioned their artillery on higher ground, allowing them to rain down devastating fire on the Lancastrian ranks. In contrast, the Lancastrians, commanded by the Earl of Warwick, were deployed south of Barnet and found themselves in disarray being misled by the fog and perhaps poor communication. Meanwhile, the centre formations of both armies clashed fiercely amidst the dense fog, the sounds of battle muffled by the mist. The sudden attack on the Yorkist left flank caused the Lancastrian army to pivot and face east, while the disoriented Yorkists found themselves turned westward. The Lancastrian John de Vere, the 13th Earl of Oxford, drove retreating Yorkists into Barnet, where chaos ensued as the town was pillaged. Attempting to regroup, Lord Oxford rallied some of his men and returned from Barnet. However, instead of attacking the rear of the Yorkist centre as intended, Oxford's forces encountered the Lancastrians. In the confusion of the fog and the chaos of battle, the Lancastrian troops mistakenly identified Oxford's men as Yorkists. They unleashed a barrage of arrows followed by a fierce charge, believing they were engaging the enemy. In the midst of this confusion, the Earl of Oxford, fearing betrayal within Warwick's army, withdrew from the field with those men he could gather. Reports suggest that in the confusion, Lancastrian troops mistook a group of banners for Yorkist reinforcements. After three hours of intense combat, with both sides nearing exhaustion, the tide of the battle seemed to hang in the balance. It was at this critical juncture that Edward IV's leadership skills came to the fore. He committed his reserve forces and urged his troops to renew their attack, rallying them for a final push. As the day wore on and the fog gradually lifted, the full extent of the battlefield became visible. The Lancastrian soldiers could be seen retreating en masse to the north, their formation broken and their morale shattered. The Battle of Barnet itself was a scene of intense and bloody fighting. Amidst the fog and the chaos, the Earl of Warwick was killed while attempting to flee, dealing a severe blow to their leadership. Warwick's death further threw the Lancastrian forces into disarray. Without his leadership and strategic guidance, the Lancastrians struggled to maintain cohesion and direction on the battlefield. The battle ended in a decisive victory for the Yorkists, solidifying Edward's position as the rightful king. The impact of the Battle of Barnet sent shockwaves throughout England. Edward's path to London was now clear, and the Lancastrian cause was severely weakened. This marked a consolidation of Yorkist power and a more secure reign for Edward. Shortly after the Battle of Barnet, another significant clash took place, the Battle of Tewkesbury. And in my next video, I will explore the details of this significant clash, shedding light on its crucial role in the conflict between the Lancastrians and Yorkists. These two pivotal conflicts played an important role in solidifying Edward IV's hold on the English throne. The Battle of Tewkesbury, fought three weeks after Barnet, marked a decisive victory for the Yorkist faction effectively crushing Lancastrian hopes for power. The Yorkists emerged triumphant, securing their dominance and bringing an end to the Lancastrian challenge to the throne. In the aftermath of Tewkesbury, the Lancastrian cause suffered a devastating blow. The Yorkists emerged as the dominant faction, leading to a period of relative stability under Edward and later his brother Richard III. However, the seeds of future conflict were sown. 
culminating in the ultimate victory of the Tudors with Henry VII at the Battle of Bosworth Field in 1485. The Wars of the Roses left a lasting impact on England, shaping its history and monarchy for generations to come. If you enjoyed this video then give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified of our next video. Join us next time where we'll be diving into more fascinating events from history.